But a lot of doctors in general now are really promoting nuts and seeds for health because of their high omega-3 fatty acids. And I know they're healthy food, but in my experience with myself and my clients, especially women, we can't seem to eat very many of them and, and not only lose weight, but maintain our weight loss. Has that been your experience at all with yourself or your clients? Are, are women maybe different than men when it comes to how much fat we can eat and, and be slender? I think that your question about nuts and seeds is totally valid. It's a great, great question because you see a lot of so-called science today uh, touting the benefits of nuts. And hey, I am not anti-nut. I eat some nuts, but I eat very, very few nuts. I, you know, maybe uh, a teaspoon of walnuts or almonds a month. You know, that, that's not much. You know, maybe a tablespoon of nuts and uh, seeds uh, per month, flax, chia, you know, that kind of thing. And and the healthiest nuts with the highest omega-3 are, are walnuts and the healthiest seeds are um, flax and chia. But nuts are calorie dense. They're very high in fat. And as we spoke before, Fat has nine calories um, per gram, and the more you eat a concentrated food, uh, a calorie concentrated food, the easier it is to overeat on it. So will one nut make you fat? Well, probably not, but it's just so easy to overeat on them. Uh, this is a summit about weight loss. And so I want people to not get up in arms and, you know, not make me notorious as bashing nuts because there are some skinny teenage boys that, you know, that they're going to want to eat nuts to, you know, to bodybuild and, and have excess calories. They're desperate to gain weight. But this summit isn't geared for those people. Nuts and seeds are more stimulating. So what I mean by that is a more intense dopamine hit occurs when we eat calorie concentrated foods. We get habituated to this level of dietary stimulation and that can result in a withdrawal um, feelings of deprivation when we try to downshift to a diet lower in fat. So my advice here is be patient. Your taste buds will neuroadapt and so will your pleasure center in the brain, but this takes time. So if you're used to eating a bunch of nuts and seeds because you've been told that, hey, you should have a handful of them every day and you start to eat less, you may feel a little worse initially. Power through that. You can do it. So more to the point of, okay, do nuts and seeds make it harder to lose excess body fat? The ingestion of dietary fat raises estrogen levels, our own natural estrogen levels I spoke about before, and estrogen induces the storage of body fat. We know that this happens in both men and women. Women naturally have more estrogen and we have a natural, because of that estrogen, a layer of fat under our skin. That's what makes women softer, their bodies softer than men. And yet the more fat that you ingest, the more estrogen you make and the more it's going to induce you to store body fat. So nuts and seeds play a role there because they're so high in fat. Here's another thing that the fat in nuts and seeds can do. It can cause insulin resistance. And when you've got lots and lots of insulin circulating through you, the, the two side effects of that are body fat storage and hunger cravings. And if you're a person struggling to lose weight, you've got those genetics and it's just, it's just harder for you to lose weight. The last thing you need is more and more insulin resistance uh, to promote body fat storage and give you hunger cravings. So nuts, you have to be careful with that. You know, so many people are afraid not to eat nuts that they feel like they're going to have a heart attack or drop dead or get dementia. And you know, other experts are citing all these studies that it's, it's dangerous to be on a low fat vegan diet. How would you counter that? Because I have seen what you have seen, at least in, in my clients, where until they stop adding the extra fat, their weight doesn't budge. Even an ounce is just too much for some of these gals. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so I love your question. Why do the nut studies say that nuts won't make me fat? Um, <laughs> this, this answer is not going to win me any popularity contests, but some studies are so flawed in their design that their conclusions are misleading. And I am not casting aspersions on um, Dr. Who of, of Harvard and, and, and Dr. Rock. Ross, of, um, he's from Spain, but I just, I just want to give you an example. Dr. Ross has studied the PREDIMED study. Researchers did not practice concealment during randomization. Okay, so you know that there's, there's two groups in studies. One group is the experimental group, and you know, so maybe those are the ones you're going to give the nuts to, see what happens to them. The other group is the, the, not, 
the control group that is not going to have the nuts. Okay, so concealment means that the researchers didn't know who was going to go into which group. So in PREDIMED, they didn't practice concealment. Therefore, the study results could have been skewed by more than 30%. And that's the level at which placebo effect exists. And so the PREDIMED study has been retracted. It's been republished, but um, th this is flawed data. And yet um, you have to look at, okay, who's paying for these studies about the benefits of nuts? The nut studies are often funded by the nut industry and they're paying researchers because back in the 80s and 90s, there was this low fat message and the, the nut industry wanted to overcome the bias against their product because people know that nuts are high in fat. And so uh, over, over the last five years, there's been more than oh, 200 studies. I, I think it's like... Um, more than 40 studies per year. And these studies are reaching the conclusions that are favorable to the marketing of nuts. And the same thing happened in the alcohol industry. They, they skewed the groups, the scientific groups, to make people think that one drink a day is healthier than not drinking at all, which is absolutely not true. But um, the connections between the funding of a study and the conclusions are not readily obvious on the surface. And so um, I really appreciate those people who have put up YouTube videos uh, talking about um, nut studies and the funding behind them. So when people are asking, are nuts and seeds healthy? That's a flawed question in my mind. The real question is, are nuts and seeds healthy compared to what? Okay, so compare, if you compare walnuts, which are the highest in omega-3, if you compare them to olive oil, which is a high fat food. Now, it, let's say you have a pound of olive oil, that's going to have 4,000 calories per pound. Let's say you have a pound of nuts, a pound of walnuts, it's going to have about 2,800 calories per pound of walnuts. So it, when weight loss is your goal, if you eat nuts instead of olive oil, yeah, potentially you could lose more weight. But if you compare walnuts, which are good for you in that they have omega-3 and they're a whole food because an oil is a, is a fat removed from its fiber. So I don't think of oil as a whole food, vegan though it may be, a nut is a whole food. But when you compare walnuts to other sources of omega-3, such as leafy green vegetables, which is where the fish get their omega-3 and they concentrate it in their fish oils. If, if you compare nuts to leafy green vegetables, there's no contest that leafy green vegetables are way better for your health in many, many ways, and especially for uh, weight loss. Um, I know this is a, a, a seminar about weight loss, but just let me seg into, you know, are nuts better than olive oil for um, overcoming insulin resistance? Yes, but will you have less insulin resistance overall if you're getting your omega-3s, which, you know, we do need from leafy green vegetables? Absolutely. So the question is, are nuts and seeds healthy? Yes, compared to sausage. No, compared to broccoli. <laughs> That's great. Because and, uh, and, and, and yes, nuts could be good for a skinny teenage boy who's underweight and he's pumping iron. He desperately wants to get big. But this seminar is not geared for them. This seminar is geared for those people who are desperate to lose weight and who may have even given up hope on that. And